I, my talk doesn't start for eight minutes, but they've given me permission to tell you something outside my talk first, which I totally want to do, because there's something great that happened last week, and it was way too late to get it in my talk. So forget about this for eight minutes. We'll get back to that. What I want you to see is the link vulnerability. How many people know about the link shortcut vulnerability? Yeah, not even half of you. <laughs> that means you guys can totally take over those guys. All right. So um, on my website, samsclass.info, they had Wi-Fi on my airplane. So I got this working on the plane to another conference I just got back from. And we did it down there. This is awesome. And you don't need to know anything. So I wrote it up here and I tried to get it in the speaker's corner, but I was too late to do it. So go to samsclass.info and you can take over everybody around you and everybody in the whole blasted world right now. This is one of those rare times. So what's going on is um, the Microsoft has a vulnerability that was found in their operating system so that link files, the routine that draws the picture on the screen, on the icon, has a bug in it. And I don't know exactly what it is. It's something like a buffer overflow. But anyway, you can put malicious binary in that file. So just viewing the file and seeing the icon means you're owned. So you can do it, and glorious HD more put it in Metasploit. So all you do is load up Metasploit, issue the same old commands you always use in Metasploit. Um, you tell it, use exploit, uh, show payloads, choose a payload like reverse TCP Metriperter. And then your victim just, you have to trick your victim into going to a website in Internet Explorer or going to an SMB share because what you make is a malicious server. But if they go and view your server, the IE will pop to Windows Explorer and they will see a window with these two files. And when this was originally found in the wild, it was traveling on USB sticks and it was taking over power stations through SCADA. But the first step of that attack, which is a three-stage attack, was this one, which is awesome. So as soon as you see this shortcut and the little picture appears, it's all over. You are owned. It has injected this dill into memory and executed it. And if you're using Metasploit, it goes a phone back to you saying, please control me. And you control it and you own that box. And that's what these instructions show you how to do. Um, Metasploit looks like this when you're running it. Um, then when they connect, it does all this complicated stuff back and forth, sending more and more stuff over to the victim. And eventually, when it's done with all that hogwash, you get a session open. And then you just open the session and you have a command prompt on that machine and you can do the whatever you want to it. I, of course, just go to the desktop and make a directory called owned. And your victim will just see directories start appearing on their desktop. It's wonderful. And there's nothing you can do about it, at least easy. There is no Microsoft patch. There are some things you can do, though, and that's, of course, the serious side of this. This is an awesome demonstration for students to get their attention, and it'll be homework for all my students next semester, but it'll be old and tired by then, like all my other homework, stuff that's been patched, so you have to get an old machine that's not patched, and then you can see it. But right now, you can do it to real living machines. And if they want to be patched, they have to go off the map. And you can use uh, Sophos, made a nice tool that will patch it. Microsoft Security Essentials apparently detects it because we tried it in the classroom two days ago in Orlando, and a guy with Microsoft Security Essentials, it popped up and saved him. So that's cool. So if you want to be safe, probably the most reasonable, sane thing to do is put on Microsoft Security Essentials. I imagine the other antivirus products will eventually catch it too, and maybe they already have. But anyway, um, there's a Microsoft workaround, but it stinks. You have to hack the registry, and you have to turn off the display of all icons. So anyway. <laughs> So all your icons look like dirt, so it's not much fun. Anyway, this is great for me that the previous speaker ended a bit early because I was thinking, I can't add this to my talk. And this is exciting. So you should all take over everybody around you at Windows and then you can laugh. Because at DEF CON, you can do this stuff. And this is, as far as I know, when it's not common that you have these living zero days with no patch. But it means that every server on the internet running Windows and almost everybody running a Windows machine in here like me is probably vulnerable. As a matter of fact, I am vulnerable. I never got to go around to patching my own box. Which is commonly the case. Attacking boxes, you never patch them. I never run the firewall, right? I'm always getting all that junk out of my way. So, yeah, you could take me over, actually. But you'd have to trick me into clicking on your link. Anyway, um, let me see if it's time for my official talk yet. Looks like it is. Is there an authority figure? There you are. Is it time to get started? Okay, he says it is. All right, so let me depart from that, which is great stuff. But it's not my official talk here, which is also extremely important. I'm here on a mission from God. Okay. Um, which is IP version 6. 
Now, I've heard about IP version 6 for years and years, and it was like this total waste of time that I didn't really care about, and it seemed all complicated. And about three years ago, for some reason, I got all excited, and I tried to do it, and I got my best student. We spent six weeks replacing the firmware of routers with DDWRT and putting on things that were supposed to make it route IP version 6, and we couldn't make it work. We just got fed up and gave up. My, one other student of mine actually got it working because he had a Cisco router at home, but it would cost $200 a month to get IP version 6 to your house. And I said, well, you know, there's no point teaching anybody anything yet because there's no equipment worth having yet that you can afford in your house, and I better wait for them to do that. But in the back of my mind, the reason why I thought it would probably be okay is because there's class D and E just sitting there. 32 class A's, enough to last us five or eight more years. So I figured there's really no crisis coming. But then I went to Hurricane Electric, uh, in Fremont, California, I went to a talk there, and they told us about IP version 6. And Aaron, the American Regional Internet, Asso Num Internet Number Association, something like that, the people that really hand out the IP addresses were there, and they said they are not going to hand out D&E for general use. So we're coming into a time of crisis, and nobody is ready. And I knew this was my mission from God, to make sure all you people know about the crisis and what you can do about it, because it's easy this time, thanks to Hurricane Electric. So. I'm Sam Bound. I teach at City College San Francisco, and everything, my talk and everything is all on the web. All my stuff is always available for anybody to use. So let me show you why I care. Um, IP version 4, we've all seen these addresses, 192, 168, 110, and of course in binary, that's a 32-bit binary number. And we all know how to subnet that and everything, but there's only 32 binary numbers, so there's only 2 to the 32 of them, and that's only 4 billion, and that's ridiculous, right? There's 7 billion people, and how many devices do you have on your body right now that need an IP address? I must have 4, and when I'm in my house I have another 12, and you know, there's no way 4 billion is ever going to cut it. So that's a problem. Um, IP version 6 is the answer. Make the addresses really long and disgusting, like this, in hexadecimal. That is an IP version 6 address. Learn to love it. That is 128 bits long, and the good thing about that is there are enough of them, of course. That is 256 billion, 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 billion. So until we colonize the entire galaxy and have every atom in our body independently addressed to reform at will, we're not going to run out of those addresses. So we will not have to have IP version 7 in another 10 years. Um, at least not because we ran out of addresses. And we really are running out of IP version 4 addresses. Here's the current situation. There are 256 class A's, blocks of 16 million, which is how they are commonly allocated. And we are now down to um, uh, maybe eight, 16 left. And they've already, already allocated something like six or eight of them this year. They're going to completely run out of them in 2011 at the current rate. It is an estimate because they, don't, they, don't, they are not allocated at a, on a regular timetable, but they're going to run out in about one year. In about one year, whoever invents the new cell phone or iPad or any kind of gizmo and wants to sell 50 million of them is going to go say, okay, I got 50 million more things to attach to the internet, and Aaron is going to say, tough, the internet is full. You cannot attach any more devices to it. <laughs> this is not going to be fun. So there's a crisis coming. We could see it coming 10 years ago, and we're now down to less than one year left, and nobody cares. Everywhere I go, most everybody, about 90% of my audiences have no interest in IP version 6 at all. They still think the way I did four months ago, it was some piece of nonsense, it's just a fake crisis like Y2K, because they can just hand out those D&E addresses. They're just sitting there. I mean, here's the projected timetable. Um, the main reservoir addresses will run out in 2011, but the regional internet registries will have some leftover, which they can continue to distribute, and they will begin running out in 2012. That's the prediction. And then people will really go, and there won't be any more IP addresses available. That's the end of the world. The internet's full. Pack up the internet and go do something else. Um, that's not going to be a hit, but let me tell you what's already started happening. I brought up two years ago to my network administrator. In City College, we have a whole Class B address space. We have 65,000 IP addresses, and we're only using 30 of them for public-facing web servers. So we don't need them, so I wanted to sell them a long time ago, because we're broke. We need money. And I went to my network administrator, and he said, you can't sell them. We don't really own them. They're on loan or, you know, rent from some agency like IANA. But they just changed their policy about a month ago, so you can really sell your IP addresses now. Because they said there are only two possibilities in the next year. They're either going to be a black market 
for used IP addresses or there's going to be a white market for used IP addresses. So we might as well choose the second of these two alternatives. And now when people apply to them and try to get IP addresses, they actually investigate why you're getting them because they want to determine if you really are going to use them or if you're just hoarding them so you can scalp them and sell them later. Speculator is IP addresses. And that's all coming. So in about a year, panic will set in. And in about two years, I think we can really get a million bucks for our class B. That's my goal. But we'll see. Because we don't need it. What you'll have to do instead of getting fresh IP addresses is you'll have to get IP version 4 addresses from some other company that was smarter than you and already went to IPv6. And that's what we're doing. And that's what all you should do as soon as possible. Anyway, the Department of Defense changed to IP version 6 in 2008. They had a goal and they met it to have the whole network runnable on IP version 6 at 2008. That is what put pressure on the end, user, end operating systems like Microsoft put it in Windows XP and they put it very well in Vista and Windows 7. It's in Linux, it's in Unix, it's in the Apple, although Apple did a pretty bad job of it, but they will eventually be pressured to fix it. Um, the rest of the federal government will switch in 2012 to IP version 6. And therefore, since every large manufacturer has to sell to the government, they have all been pressured into putting IP version 6 in their products, even though there is no significant amount of traffic on the backbone in IP version 6 yet, and no significant computer consumer demand for it yet. But it's coming, and there will be a huge rush for it, and when it comes, there will be mad chaos because we are not ready, and most manufacturers and technicians are not getting ready. So the people that do know are going to be sitting pretty, and that should be you. And it's going to be my students, because whether they like it or not, they're all going to do IP version 6 homework next semester. Um, and my prediction is they will be glad of that in a year. So here's the summary. This is the current state of the internet. <laughs> and this is our fate. Those who accept soon will have a position of power in the new order. Those who resist will be crushed. So. Now that you have hopefully been motivated, you can now face the problem I faced, which is what do you do? Because there are big, thick books full of long, complicated, irritating things. And I looked at Microsoft's recommendation for an IP version 6 lab, and it was 260 pages long. And I said, how can it be this hard? It doesn't have to be that hard if you're a wimp. If you want to do it the Microsoft way and get all your domain controllers and exchange servers and everything, there's a bunch of fancy stuff you have to do. But you can get started and do the essentials easy, and it's fun, and it's a game. So anyway, but here's the plan. The one plan which is really popular is to ignore it and hope it just goes away. This is not a practical plan, but it's the most popular one. Um, the other one is to buy a gateway. And this is what's really going to happen, unfortunately, in everybody's house because they have a bunch of legacy equipment in their house that's IP version 4 only. So they are going to buy an IP version 6 device that will convert it to IP version 6 to go on the internet. And there are currently four incompatible standards for that and four manufacturers making poorly designed devices to do that. So in the future, actually making a game connect to a game over here is going to require 16 combinations of imperfect network translation on the way. And even more than that, Aaron will be giving some talks here and they make it into this. But the IETF guy at the last conference I went to was very unhappy because there's now NAT 4 to 4, changing IP version 4 to other version 4. There's NAT 4 to 6. There's NAT 6 to 4. And now there's even NAT 6 to 6, which was never supposed to happen. The whole point of IP version 6 was going to be end to end addressing, but that's already broken because the end user machines can't handle the multi homing. And I'll show you a little bit of that later. Anyway, um, so gateways are in the future and they're going to be a bloody mess, but companies are not going to use them. What you really want to have is dual stack on your company. This is the goal for the foreseeable future. For the next 10 years, we're going to have to run both IP version 4 and IP version 6 on our whole networks because everybody's going to have a mix of devices. And right now, you can run IP version 4 only, but in 360 days, and therefore, all the people that plan more than a year ahead have already begun doing this, like Comcast and Verizon and Facebook and Google. They're already putting up IP version 6 properties, so soon there will be IP version 6 only websites and IP version 6 only end user devices. I think it's Verizon cell phones are already IP version 6 only. It might be Comcast. I get it mixed up. One of those companies has already decided to use IP version 6 only on their cell phones. Smart meters are IP version 6 only, and Japanese televisions are IP version 6 only. And they get converted at, their, at the enterprise uh, network address translation. Anyway, 
In the short run, the trick to get started learning is to use a tunnel. This is awesome. If you tunnel, you can take an existing IP version 4 internet connection and you can run IP version 6 over it. Now, of course, this does not solve the problem. You're still using an IP version 4 address. It makes all your performance in IP version 6 inferior to your IP version 4 and all that, but it means you